It's Santa! Happy Christmas, everybody! <laughs> no, wrong festival. Halloween. <laughs> Turn that thing off! Yeah, we got to do. It's quite cool, though. Been enjoying that this morning. We've got a great project for you this week. Uh, something a little bit Halloween based, so. Without further ado, we're going to kind of crack into this one today. We're going to be using grinders, plasma cutters. Um, I've made up a load of templates to make the process easier. But essentially what we're going to be trying to create is a dirty shed, completely original. Let me just get that little bit of fluff off there. That's actually a better one. <laughs> dirty shed creations, Halloween based skull drinks coaster. Antique finish. We've got a lovely wool felt back. We had a little bit of a mess up this morning because part of the process of making these to essentially get this finish is once you've marked them all up and scratched them, I like to get a uniform finish on them. And how I do that is I throw them into the forge. Uh, what I did was I put all six in the forge and when I went back to them, one had vanished completely. One we were left with this and almost more annoying this one. I think what we might do is we might give these away. So, uh, who is going to want those? I don't know. Pea pods? Pea pods? Just some pea pods that are out there. Yeah, what are they going to use them for? Uh, scaring the hell out of their children. You know, no? Or just for putting in the bin. Kind of probably post them straight in the bin. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, without further ado, let's just get into this one. Welcome to Dirty Shed's Halloween special. <laughs> Was that the most Do it again, because you were looking at me. Okay. Got to look in the lens. Okay. Welcome to Dirty Shed Creations Halloween special. <laughs> you crazy fool. Uh, I like to cut these out in two, so what I do is I get this one that's marked out, we've just templated that, pop it on top of there, get them something like, what's that to? and then stick it on the edge of the table, there we go. So we'll just swap onto the four mil grinding disc. Here's tighten her up. Let's get shaping. So there we go, two roughed out skulls. Uh, next phase, um, let's get back to the plasma cutter. Whoop. Oh. <laughs> No toll. Template. Whoa! Yeah.
So we use the plasma cutter to get the ocular cavities and the nasal cavities. But what you can do is just get your pillar drill or a drill and just uh, trepan, I believe the term is, uh, a series of holes in a line, punch out the middle bit, get your hand file, file it round. You get a unique um, you get a unique shape then. We've used a template which we um, oversized to allow for the kind of offset for the nozzle um, and then we've cut those in. I mean I think these look great um, but you know they don't all want to be the same. It would kind of be a shame if they were all, right, all identical. You know you want them to be slightly different. You know you want the eyes at a different level, the nose cavity to kind of be slightly different. It just adds an individuality to each piece. The process now Unfortunately, grab a file, clean up all the edges. Uh, the plasma cut does leave little burrs kind of here, uh, so they need to just be kind of cleaned up. We don't want people cutting themselves on our Halloween drinks coasters, or maybe we do, I don't know, I haven't really looked into it. So what I've tried to do here basically is not go to, we're not kind of trying to, you know, we want to leave some of this texture on there, so we're just trying to whip it around these outlines and around the edge. So we still have some lines across here. But I kind of figure that this isn't really, the look we're going for here is old and kind of worn in. So we're not going to sit and kind of polish this until it's gleaming. Um, we've got a uniform ground there or uniform background that we can work with. So what we do now, the nice easy part, we get our blacking solution and we just drop him in. Whoops. I thought you were forging it. No, I'm not going to bother. I think that kind of ruined it. This one here, this is before it goes in the blacket solution and this one is after. Now, why we've achieved this finish is two things. I'm using a metal container to black him, which probably isn't advisable. Secondly, there's a lot of, these are going in straight after being sanded. So there's loads of kind of particulate matter um, in the blacking solution. And I think what that's doing is it's giving us that finish. But you know, life's an experiment. We've given him a rinse in some clean water. We're not going to put another finish over the top of here. You know, it might be advisable to put lacquer on there, but I think what we're going to do is we're just going to leave these to naturally oxidise. Um, but Camera Boy wanted a really nice felt backing, which we've shown you on there. This is a uh, quite an expensive wool felt. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to do that piece now. Let's get on with it. So first things first, make sure our skull fits on our piece of felt. Perfect. Make sure you get it the right way up. Be ashamed to lose that really, really quite crazy finish. What we're using here is just ordinary off the shelf contact adhesive. This is Evo Stick, other brands are available. Don't worry about overspill at this point, we'll deal with that in a second, but let's get that. Essentially, that just, he just fits on there and get a weight on him, just help with the adhesion. We'll deal with this in the meantime. Let's 
great as he looks, he is a little bit tatty. You can see all of these hairs and tufts and stuff. We don't really like that here at Dirty, Dirty Shed Creations. We want him to look like this, nice and clean and tidy, or cleaner and tidier. So, a bit of a problem. How the hell do you do that? You can sit here and you can cut each fibre with a scalpel, pain in your backside. Uh, so, what did Uncle Al come up with? Fire! Fire. <laughs> <laughs> in Ebbs. Well, it is Halloween. Look at that. is that up beautifully. And around there. Go on, then. Well, that's another bitch of a project finished. <laughs> uh, right, there's another project finished. Um, I think we like this guy the best. Um, I think it's given me an idea, and I'm pretty sure this mottled effect is because of the part particles of brass. So what it makes me think is maybe the next time we do some blacking, what we'll actually do is put some iron grindings and some brass grindings on the top and see what that does. So we've learnt something there. That'll be quite cool. We'll keep you posted with that little experiment. Um, I think all in all, uh, we kind of enjoyed making those. Um, the felt, the glue in the felt on the back was a bit of a... I think we need to look at that a little bit um just to perfect that but we were kind of thinking that these might be a product that we're um, we're going to offer on our etsy shop um probably details are flashing around all over the place now um so yeah they're not going to be available for kind of probably a month or so but um i think we've got a little bit of perfecting to do but interesting little project um and you'll see a little bit more of this guy anyway happy halloween from me uncle al and from camera boy, him. Because usually coasters aren't kind of, they don't have holes cut in them for obvious reasons, but um, these are a novelty item and you know, they're a dirty shed creation as well. So you know what, there aren't any rules and anyone who says so can go suck a d